point shot has changed the game, but this year more than more than ever, it's such a focus. Mike Connolly hits the three. Boyan Bogdanovich hits the three. Joe Engels, I'm quite confident. <laughs> Jazz six of 12 from downtown in the first quarter. Jazz continue to stay warm behind the arc. Royce O'Neal, Splappa, Jazz lead by seven. Conley, who had a game high 14 in the first half with another three as the lead begins to grow. LeBron cutting down the lane. Big finish. Another look at this one. Even uh, Rudy Gobert knew better than to jump there. Jordan Clarkson's star turn continues to add game after game. Jazz jump out to a 16-point lead. Donovan Mitchell. First points of the game. Jazz had 14 threes in the first half, tied for the most in a half in franchise history. Again, 28 in their last game. Jazz rolling. LeBron's pass picked off. Up top, Mitchell, Gobert, alley-oop. Another look. Defense turns to offense, and this time LeBron knows not to get caught in no man's land. Spider, look out. Oh, my. Donovan Mitchell. He's the perfect height with the perfect bounce for it to, to do that thing where it looks like you're kind of, there's no gravity. And then he can do that. Mitchell. And the Jazz rolling. And Mitchell was asked afterwards, you surprised about how well y'all are playing? Um, I wouldn't say we're surprised. I think, you know, the biggest thing is we kind of expected this for us. You know, I think after the bubble, the way we play, we saw a lot of things that we can definitely, um, we, we saw a lot of things that we definitely improve on. But we also found out about ourselves. You know, obviously missing Boyan, we found out a lot about each other, what we can do, our competitive nature, and the stuff we need to do to get better. You know, and guys went, you know, in the offseason, came back, locked in, and, you know, this is the team we wanted to be uh, last year. You know, last year we kind of had our ups and downs throughout the year. We're playing consistent basketball right now, and that's the biggest thing, you know, is con continuing to play consistently uh, for each other and uh, doing little things. Uh, we got away from that in the in the playoffs uh Last year, and we're doing it every night. We've got to continue to do it throughout the year. Tim Legler joins us now, a man who made a living shooting the basketball. And I mentioned, Tim, 28 threes in their last game, 22 in this. That's 50 in two games. You have to be able to shoot it. But the way the ball moves, how much did what they did in terms of ball movement in this game on Wednesday night lead to making those shots? Yeah, I think what's impressive about them, Scott, is how little time it spends in each guy's hands. They're so decisive in what they're doing. Everything has a purpose, and they've got multiple guys, probably four guys, that when they penetrate, they start thinking like a point guard. Most teams have one or two. They've got four. Just These are a couple possessions, Scott, that for any team in the league, you would look at one of these and say, hey, that might be the best possession they had the entire night. The irony is with the Jazz, this is pretty much what it looks like all the time it's all based on high pick and roll penetration and then they get that thing moving i love the second one because you take a look at conley getting downhill and the way gobert dives you know you engage that big guy montrez harrell and when gobert dives you force that corner defender in this case lebron to pinch off the corner he's got to pick up the roll guy and now you got two guys on the weak side one defender poor west matthews has to make a decision and they still make an extra pass because royce o'neal Easily could have pulled that, but he makes one more pass to Jordan Clarkson. And it's I feel like when I watch them and I'm taking notes, how many times I will write down extra pass, great look. I'll put an asterisk next to it so I can go back and find that play. But I do it more with them than any team in the league by far. And actually their ball movement does remind me of Golden State, I think, at their peak, the way they move it. That's how Utah is moving the basketball and it's a beautiful thing to watch because there is no wasted dribble with this team. Yeah, the ball never sticks, as they say. On the other side of this with the Lakers, look, we understand that Davis isn't playing, and he is the 1A to the 1, which is clearly LeBron. But I just wonder what you're seeing out of them during this stretch, if that gives you any concern looking down the road as it relates to the champions. Very, very little. If Anthony Davis is healthy, I think this team's go, going to be in the conference finals minimum, probably the finals. Here's the deal. When you have an NBA champion and you get to this point in the season, which is right in the middle of the season, 
The newness of the year has worn off, so that adrenaline you get, even though it was a short offseason, you still have an adrenaline rush at the start of the year. That's gone. The playoffs are too far away to think about. You're right in the middle of it, and you're in a rut, and you don't have Anthony Davis. You don't have Dennis Schroeder. So this is the team right now going through the motions a little bit on the defensive end of the floor. Um, I don't think this is anything that's going to lead to a temporary change in the way they defend. If they have Anthony Davis on the floor and they have Dennis Schroeder, this is a team that can be the best defensive team in the league, and they've got two superstars with as much versatility as you can want offensively. I literally have zero concern. I'm more impressed out of this with the way Utah's playing than I'm going to take away, look at the Lakers, what's wrong with them. I'm just not in that mindset because it's the middle of the year. You know, if this was a month from now, I'd be a little bit more concerned. Not right now. These are the sure. dog days of the season for an <laughs> NBA champion, and they're going through it shorthanded. I'm totally with you. Give the credit to the Jazz rather than the blame to the Lakers. The most interesting thing will be as we get towards those playoffs is the seeding as you look towards those conference semis because you don't want to run into the wrong team too early out there. That'll be an interesting subplot, but that's for down the road, and we'll talk about it when the time's right. Tim, appreciate you, man. Be good. Thanks, Scott. Three more things from this game, and they're little. If you add them up, they could be big. Franchise record 28 threes on Monday. Jazz fire again, drain 14 more in the first half, as you saw. 22 in the game, 53s over the past two games. They set the NBA record for any two-game span. Lakers have now lost four consecutive games without Anthony Davis, fall to 5-5 five and five without him this season. It's LeBron's first personal four-game losing streak since the tail end of his first Lakers season in 2019. Lakers now four and a half games behind the Jazz. The gap could perhaps grow in the coming weeks with the release of the second half of the NBA schedule. The Jazz have the easiest remaining strength of schedule across the entire league. That is a scary combo considering how well they are running. Yeah. Look at the top of the West. Jazz 26 and 6. Lakers in third full game behind the Clippers. Phoenix was the only other 20 win team entering the day. Had a chance to pass the Lakers. That was not to be. The Hornets played well in this one. Devin Booker, because Anthony Davis is out, now correctly named an All-Star because that's what this guy is. I feel like he gets slept on. And look, I get it. There's only so many spots. But if this guy's not an All-Star. I don't know what an All-Star looks like. He had 16 on 7 of 9 shooting in the first quarter. And it's the array of offensive tricks. And then it's not all him. Behind the back to DeAndre Ayton. Another look at this one. All those Hornets concerned about Booker and Aiton with the bucket. Suns lead by one. One number one pick. Here's another LaMelo Ball. Ensuing possession for the Suns. Ball with the steal and then look out. Anything could happen. Pass? No, he's a brilliant passer. Pulls from three. Back-to-back -back three. 